بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعين به ونستغفره ونعود بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله تعالى فلا مدل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Praise be to Allah from whom we ask help and pardon, and in whom we take refuge from the evils within ourselves. He whom Allah guides has no one who can lead him astray, and he whom he leads astray has no one to guide him. I testify there is no God but Allah, and I testify that Muhammad is his servant and messenger. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, wherever you are around the world. I pray you are all in the best of health and iman. First of all, I would like to apologize for the delay of recording. Um, inshallah, this is the first audio lecture of the Digging um, Jewel series that aims to cover various topics from the characteristics of the Salaf, parables of the Prophet والسلام, biographies of prominent individuals, and many other topics where I would extract jewels and gems from them, and what we can learn, and how we can adapt and implement it into our lives in today's society, inshallah. There will also be a text version for my brothers and sisters who are deaf and a braille text for those who are blind. It is important and essential to unite all Muslims as we are all in need of these gems. May Allah accept inshallah. Now today we will be talking about one of the mothers of the believers whose story brings up many invaluable lessons for each of us on how to lead a purposeful life for brothers and sisters. She was the first wife of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the first heart to be affected and to accept his call to Islam. The one who sacrificed her all for Islam, and he was a great support in its earliest days. She had two titles, Amir at Quraysh, Princess of Quraysh, and at Tahira, the pure one. Due to her noble, sublime, and honorable character, he helped the poor, assisted her relatives financially, and even provided for the marriage of those of her kin who could not otherwise have the means to marry. She who was the mother of Fatima, radiallahu anha, the first lady of paradise, the grandmother of the beloved grandchildren of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Hassan and Hussein, who was to be the foremost of the Yaws in paradise. Besides Fatima, she was also the mother to Qasim and Abdullah, Zainab, Ruqayya, and Kaltum from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yes, the woman who I'm referring to is Khadija al Qubra, radiallahu anha. She was born in the year 556 CE. Her mother's name was Fatima bint Zayd ibn al-Azm and, and her father's name was Khawarid ibn Asad. Arabia at the time consisted of many tribes and clans. But Khadija belonged to the clan of Banu Hashim of the tribe of Banu Asad and he was the distant cousin of her husband of our beloved Prophet wasallam, as Qusay was the ancestor of all the clans belonging to the Quraysh. In addition, some authentic sources revealed that Quraysh's real name was Fahar, and they rooted back to Prophet Ismail, son of Prophet Ibrahim, son of Sam, who was the son of Nuh, but there were many prophets amongst the ancestors of Prophet Muhammad Khadija's father was a wealthy merchant, and had a successful business which was inherited by Khadija after his death at the Battle of Fajr. She was married twice before marrying our Prophet ﷺ. He was 25 at the time, and she was 40 years old. Her first husband was Abu Hala, Malik ibn Nabash ibn Zarara ibn Tamimi, and bore him two children, Hala and Hind. Her second husband was Atik ibn Ait ibn Abdullah ibn, ibn al-Makhzumi, and she had a daughter by him as well named Hinda. She died three years before the Hijra, which was the Prophet's migration to Medina at the age of 65 and was buried in a place called Hujun near Mecca. And we believe Prophet was heartbroken at the loss of a dedicated companion whose iman, taqwa, unflinching steadfastness and uncompromising support for him for almost 25 years and made her invaluable to the cause of Islam. The first gem that we can learn from Khadija is the firmness of her belief. At the earliest stage, she was the first person to have an abiding faith in the utterances of Prophet and to accept Islam as her religion and her way of life. 
She was blessed with the distinction of having been greeted with salam, greetings, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the angel Jibreel alayhi salam that makes us, so many of us look at her as an inspiration. Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim both related Abu Hurayr radiallahu anhu narration that Jibreel alayhi salam arrived in the presence of the noble prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, this is Khadija. He was coming. She has with her a utensil in which there is curry, or he said food or drink. When she arrives, give her salam from her sustain and myself, and give her the glad tidings of a house in paradise, which will be hollow, in which there will be no noise, din, nor weariness. In addition, the Prophet ﷺ said, Sufficient for you from the woman of the world are Maryam bint Ibrahim, the mother of Isa, Khadija bint Khawalid, Fatima bint Muhammad وسلم, and an Asiya, the wife of Pharaoh. This hadith is sahih and is reported by Anas in Ahmed and Tirmidhi and others, and is declared authentic by Al Bani in his Tartif Sahih or Jama'i uh, number 18. So, how did it all start, my brothers and sisters? Well, our beloved Prophet would seclude himself from the society in which he lived for contemplation to a cave in Mount Hira on the outskirts of Mecca. One night he was visited by Indra Jibreel. This was the start of his prophethood. He was really frightened and went to seek comfort from his wife Khadija radiallahu anha. As she, as she saw his stage, she knew something must have happened. As he informed her of what happened, he said to her, Oh Khadija, what has happened to me? I fear for myself. She replied, It can't be. Be happy. I swear by Allah that he will never humiliate you. By Allah, you join ties of relationship. You speak the truth, you bear people's burdens, you help the destitute, you entertain guests and you help the vestitudes which affect the people. This is reported by Aisha and is collected by Muslim. Now Imam al Nawawi, who wrote the commentary on Sahih al-Muslim said that the scholars have explained that Khadija's statement by saying that she knew that Allah would never allow one who had been given such a generous character and noble manners by him to be affected by madness, since good manners is itself is such a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at her conviction in what the Prophet sallallahu said. Pause for a moment and note her weighty words. She didn't doubt him nor show the slightest hesitation towards the words he uttered. In, in fact, she was his greatest source of comfort, the first to provide security for him and be sincere to him. She believed in him and was convinced that it could only be one of such eloquent character who could be worthy of revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And thus hers was the first heart to be moved and to accept Islam. She then took him to her cousin Waraka, a Christian monk confirmed what she had thought that Muhammad was indeed the long awaited prophet of Allah. She did not fear the backlash that would inevitably come from defying the belief of the ancestors and leaders of the community. Instead, she became resolved to hold on to Islam, the truth, and do all she could to ensure its success. This emphasizes courage complemented with firm belief to stand against and denounce the courageous tribe's way of life. We were proud and, and affluent people who was at the heart of trading and home of the idols in order to practice Islam, to believe in a religion that no one else did. Now many of us, my dear brothers and sisters, face daily challenges in order to practice our Islam in a Western society, whether at work, on the street, school, or in an academic institution. Now we need to engage with our friends and colleagues to portray Islam in the best possible manner through our manners and actions. We need to show them that Islam is a positive deen and is alternative to the liberal values that are considered the foundation of happiness and self-fulfillment. Khadija not only believed, but her words showed that she understood the honor of holding on to the truth, the haqq. She hoped that Muhammad was a prophet of his people and therefore she be associated with the struggle to come. This is the iman, the faith that we all aspire to, that is unshakable and bears the true meaning of yaqeen, certainty. However, her loyalty and assistance didn't stop there. The next thing we will look at is her living to give dawah to invite people to Islam. When Islam first started, Muslims were small in number, but Khadija 
remained alongside her husband in support and assisted him in Dawa publicly when the following verses was revealed three years after his prophethood in Surah Al Hijrah, verse 94 to 96. <laughs> Therefore, proclaim openly Allah's message that which ye are commanded, and turn away from the mushrikun. Truly, we wish to fight you against the scoffers who set up along Allah another God they will come to know. She would visit people door to door. Her family commitments did not hinder her from doing her duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She spent all her wealth in Dharma, freeing slaves and helping the poor. She knew Allah was the provider and the wealth she worked for would please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if it was used in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and would increase its value for her on the day of judgment, Yom Qiyamah. Now Khadija radiallahu anha did not live to see Islam implemented, but she sacrificed her life for its implementation. For some amongst the lessons we can learn here, my dear brothers and sisters, it's time. If she was able to go door to door, then we can create an opportunity to speak about Islam to family, neighbours, colleagues and friends. She did not give up when she struggled, rather she proceeded. This is not to say that when you give dawah to your relative or friend that they'll accept the next day. Allah knows best. It will take time and patience and only Allah guides whom he wills and misguides whom he wills. The woman has the same responsibilities and obligations as men do in giving dawah. As Islam is the only way that will breathe life back into the Ummah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In addition to income, my brothers and sisters, living in society, you would typically hear that we work hard so we can use it to have a good time, shopping and whatever, and with little emphasis on the bigger picture on our purpose of life. Indeed, we do need to enjoy ourselves to an extent and manner, but we should also remember and recognize one of Allah's names, the Provider, al Razik. We should remember our brothers and sisters who were poor and given charity. We should also try to utilize as much as we can in his way. Help one another in acts of piety and righteousness and do not assist each other in the act of sinfulness and transgression and be aware of Allah. Very, verily, Allah is, is severe in punishment. This is in Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse 2. Now the third gem is she was a devoted wife and mother. Getting married fulfills half our deen, and the honor Islam places on the wife and mother is well known to create an environment and teach our children about Islam and how to become good Muslims with faith and action. Khadija was an ideal wife and mother who cared for her children, ensured they had the best upbringing by training, nurturing and teaching Islamic principles to her daughters, and that safeguarding and protecting her family meant ensuring they live by the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and avoid his prohibitions, and she supported her husband's religion and struggle of carrying Islam. It is reported by Aisha radiallahu anha that she became jealous of Khadija radiallahu anha due to the fondness with which he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke of her and asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam if Khadija was the only woman worthy of his love. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, She believed in me when no one else did. She accepted Islam and people rejected me. And she helped and comforted me when there was no one else to lend me a helping hand. Despite the struggles with Dawa, she also struggled like any mother of the divorces of two of her daughters, Rakhaya and Umkaltum. She knew it was a test and knew that Allah knows best. 